Hi, this is Blake, and I'm going to show you how to map on Project 1788 for the Tanzania Development Trust. So I have a task square selected, and I said edit with the ID editor, and that brought me to the ID editor. This purple bounding box is, of course, the area that I'm responsible for. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a fair amount of clouds, so I won't be able to map very much of this square. I'm going to click on Zoom In to edit, and that'll take me in and so my goal is just to zoom in. I obviously need to zoom in more because I'm looking for buildings and I'm looking for roads to map, uh, as well as residential areas. So in a brief look at this here, I'm just going to keep zooming in until it makes sense to me, um, until I can actually do the mapping. Okay, great. So there's some mapping to be done here. So I'm just going to keep zooming in until it's good with me. And you can use the plus key or you can use that. Um, I use the mouse wheel, but it looks like somebody's already done a little bit of mapping here. Uh, by the way, a cute trick you can use is to hit the W key and that changes to just the frame instead of the fill in so you can easily see what's under your mapping. And so this person looks like they did it right. They mapped uh, two rectangular buildings and a round building. That's perfect. Um, for some odd reason, they left a couple things and that's okay. That gives us something to map. So I'm going to map this building. I go to my area tool um, and I just draw, you know, I go corner to corner and I click on each corner. And then when I'm all done, I click on, I double click. Okay, you can see this is going to want to join it accidentally to the, the building next to me. So I'm just going to make sure that doesn't happen. So my corner is going to be a little short. And I'm just going to double click and that finishes that. And all I've done is draw the area. You'll notice it's white and these are orange and that's because I haven't tagged this as a building yet. So I come over here to building features and since I have no idea what kind of a building this is I just say building features and then I pick the generic building tag. So I'll go ahead and mark that a generic building tag. And then the very last step that's quite important is for these rectangular buildings I need to come back over and hit the S key and that will square this building up for me. Um, it just makes things neater. It makes it easier to map things that are closer together. Um, and it makes it a little bit more realistic because it's actually squared up in real life. So that's one building. And then this to me looks like a round building here. And this looks like a round building. So I'm going to quickly do this round building. And I get my area tool. And the way that you do round buildings in ID is pretty easy. Um, I'm really just going to draw a triangle that's on the, the corners of the triangle will be on the edge of the round structure. And then you double click to finish just as if it were a square building. So now because the last time I went to building features and selected building, it remembers that and it puts it back up at the top for me. So I'm going to mark it a building. And now um, I've drawn a triangle on my circular building, but now instead of hitting the S key to square this building, I'm going to hit the O key to make this building circular. And that's it. And now I've got a round building. Um, this one, it's hard to tell. This one looks like this one looks like it might be a round building too. It's very small, but it's nonetheless a building. Area tool, little triangle. Double click to finish. Mark it a building. Hit O to make it round, and that one's done. And so the other thing that you're supposed to do as part of this project is they've asked us to uh, enclose buildings in the residential area land use tag. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for this. So you get your area tool again and much like you did when you were doing a building you just kind of click along and you outline relatively closely and double click to finish. And this time you come over to land use features and you say residential area. And now that one's marked as a residential area. And the third thing that they asked us to map is they've asked us to map roads. So I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to look for roads. And you can see somebody's already mapped this road here. If I click on this object, oh, if I click on that object, normally it would show me what it was. I don't know why it doesn't at the moment, but I don't really want to start this video over. So we're just going to work with not knowing what that road is. However, this definitely looks like this is probably a path. Um, and it's probably used partially for access to those buildings. I'm just going to zoom out. Generally to map roads, you kind of want to zoom out a little bit. This is a fair amount of zooming out. But um, 
you definitely need to zoom out a little bit to map roads. So I'm just going to zoom back in here, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time. But this is definitely something I would map, because this is a path. It disappears out, so this is a path. So I'm going to go ahead and get my line tool. You use the line tool for mapping roads. And see, when I go over this existing road, it wants to snap to an existing node, which is great, because roads need to connect to each other. So I'm going to start connected to whatever this road is. Um, and I'm going to start, I'm going to connect right at that node. And then I'm just going to click along this path. Normally, I wouldn't map this path, except it's used for access to that residential area. So it's worth mapping. So I go to Path Features, and I just choose Path. Um, there's other options here, but just out of convention, we generally just use the generic path selection. And that's it. This is now mapped as a path. It's a shame I can't really find an actual road here to map. Um, that isn't already mapped. Somebody already did a nice job and mapped all these roads. Uh, you know, if we were following the, the instructions, so this one looks like, again, whomever was here, they mapped most of it. You could outline this as a residential area. That would not be wrong. I would not map this path. You know, it's generally understood that this track, whatever goes by here, unmaintained track road is going to be used to access these buildings. So mapping all these tiny paths like this just gets to be not super useful. What we're really interested in are the major roads. So that's what we use for getting around. Um, so you don't really need to map all these little tiny paths. The only reason I mapped that path down below was because that was kind of the only means of access. Um, to these buildings down here. They were pretty far away from the main road, so it was sort of worth it to map them, to map this little path. But if there were, you know, a couple of little paths just around in here, I would not map those. And that's about it. You want to do the buildings, you want to outline a group of buildings with the residential area, and you want to try and map the major roads that are going to settlements um, and that sort of stuff. And just make sure your roads are connected to something. Um, and you're good to go. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.